Hi, once again this is Chris and this video is about how I tested the system Verilog code which converts and rounds a 32-bit signed integer to an IEEE 754 binary 32 value. Before that I want to review the study questions from the previous video. In the case that the carryout bit is 1, how do we know that the sum output by p adder 24 has a least significant bit of 0 and that by shifting the sum right we aren't losing any precision? To answer this we need to ask what input values to p adder 24 will produce a sum which generates a carryout bit of 1. This module is adding three numbers. TSIG, which is our 32-bit input significant truncated to 24 bits, 0, and round bit. The input value 0 doesn't contribute anything to our sum, so it can be ignored. Round bit only has two possible values, 0 and 1. In the case that round bit is 0, it won't contribute to the sum, so it too can be ignored. The only other value of round bit which could possibly produce a carry out is when round bit is set to 1. Next we need to ask ourselves what does it mean when the carry out bit is 1? It means that the sum won't fit into a 24 bit result. That is, the sum has to be at least hexadecimal value 1 followed by 6 zeros. If we subtract the round bit value 1 from this number, we get the hexadecimal value f, 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 f. This means that the significand, which we're rounding, has to have its 24 most significant bits set to 1. This is the only way to get a carry out of 1. Since we know that the sum will be hexadecimal 1 followed by 6 zeros, the least significant bit of the sum must be zero. So shifting the sum right by one bit doesn't cause a loss of precision. The second study question is to consider integer sizes 8, 16, 32, and 64 bits, and the floating point formats binary 16, binary 32, binary 64, and binary 128. There are 16 possible combinations for performing the integer to floating point conversion. Which of these combinations can possibly cause an overflow? I'm going to start by producing a table of the ranges for signed 8, 16, 32, and 64-bit integer values. The largest magnitude numbers for these signed integer types are negative 2 to the 7th power, negative 2 to the 15th power, negative 2 to the 31st power, and negative 2 to the 63rd power, respectively. The Emacs values for the binary 16, binary 32, binary 64, and binary 128 formats are 15, 127, 1023, and 16,383, respectively. By comparing the exponent sizes, we can determine if an overflow is possible. Overflows are possible any time the maximum exponent from an integer is greater than the maximum exponent for a particular floating point format. The following table shows which of the combinations can cause an overflow. What about when we're converting unsigned integers to the IEEE 754 floating point formats? The largest possible integers for the 8, 16, 32, and 64-bit integers are 2 to the 8th power minus 1, 2 to the 16th power minus 1, 2 to the 32nd power minus 1, and 2 to the 64th power minus 1. We can convert 8-bit unsigned integers to any of the IEEE 754 binary floating point formats without overflow. Similarly, when converting 32 and 64-bit unsigned integers, we will only get an overflow when converting to the binary 16 format. So, for the 8, 32, and 64-bit unsigned integer types, our table doesn't change. 
The only row of our table which changes is the row for converting 16-bit unsigned integers. As noted, the largest 16-bit unsigned integer is 65,535. If we convert this number into a binary floating point value, we get 1 point followed by 15 ones multiplied by 2 to the 15th power. In order to store this value as a binary 16 number, we truncate the significant to 11 digits to get 1 point followed by 10 ones times 2 to the 15th power. If the user has selected the rounding attributes round ties to even, round toward positive, or round ties to away, then round bit is going to be 1. Remember that in the previous video, I scaled everything by 2 to the n sig power. In the previous video, I also ignored the exponent for the number being converted. In this case, the significant is scaled by an additional factor of 2 to the 15th power. So round bit is really 1 times 2 to the minus n sig power times 2 to the 15th power. Since n sig for the binary 16 format is 10, this is 1 times 2 to the minus 10th power times 2 to the 15th power, which can be written as 0 point followed by 9 zeros followed by 1 times 2 to the 15th power. When we add round bit to the significant, we get 1 0 point followed by 10 zeros times 2 to the 15th power. As you can see, we got to carry out because we have more than one digit to the left of the binary point. We need to renormalize by shifting the significant one bit to the right and adding one to the exponent. Performing these steps, our rounded representation will be 1 point followed by 10 zeros times 2 to the 16th power. Remembering that since the maximum exponent value for the binary 16 format is 15, we have an overflow and must return positive infinity as our result. By the way, 65,535 isn't the only 16-bit unsigned integer value which may cause an overflow. Depending on the rounding mode, values as small as 65,505 may cause an overflow when converting to the binary 16 floating point format. Converting an unsigned 16-bit integer to any of the larger binary floating point formats will not cause an overflow. Note that in this table I've adjusted the exponent for integers to account for the effects of rounding. To implement the round ties to away rounding attribute, we can add the text in blue below. Remember that deciding bit is 1 is an alias for the most significant bit of y bar as defined in the previous video. If deciding bit is 1 is true, then either y bar is greater than 1 half or we have a tie. In either case, we need to round the significant up to f plus 1. Now on to the main topic of this video. Testing the conversion of 32-bit signed integers to binary 32 floating point numbers and, when needed, rounding the result. To start, I created a Verilog dollar sign monitor statement to print the results of the conversion every time the 32-bit integer value is updated. This statement prints the value of the 32-bit integer in both decimal and hexadecimal, followed by four different floating point values. These four floating point values are the results of the round ties to even, round toward zero, round toward positive, and round toward negative rounding attributes respectively. The dollar sign monitor statement also prints the value of the corresponding inexact flag value. Take a look at how the inexact variable is manipulated in the arguments list of the dollar sign monitor statement. The inexact flag, which is passed out of the rounding module, is a single bit. The test code declares inexact as a bit vector and passes a different bit from this vector to the modules performing the four different rounding modes. 
The AND of all the bits in the bit vector is used to control the ternary operator. And nested in one of the subclauses of the ternary operator is the logical NOR of all the bits of the bit vector. This logic is used to verify that if the inexact flag is true for one of the rounding modes, it's true for all of them. And conversely, if one of the inexact flags is false, that they're all false. Should these two tests both fail, an error result for the inexact flag is posted. This covers the meaning of the test results reported by the test code. The first test is triggered in the initial block which declares the dollar sign monitor statement. Here the input integer is set to zero. The output for all four rounding modes must be the binary 32 positive zero value and the inexact flag must be false. The next set of tests verifies that all of the integer powers of 2 in both their positive and negative forms are correctly converted. The loop tests both plus and minus 2 to the nth power for values of n from 0 to 30. After the loop, there is one additional negative number tested because sine 32-bit integers can hold negative 2 to the 31st power, but not positive 2 to the 31st power, so this test couldn't be performed in the loop. None of these values requires rounding, so the results of all four rounding modes must be equal, and the inexact flag must be false. The next set of tests is to ensure that the inexact flag is set or cleared in the situations which we expect. This test works by creating integers which require from 1 to 31 bits of precision to be represented exactly. Any integer which can be expressed exactly with 24 or fewer bits of precision must return the inexact flag set to false, that is, 0. Any integer which requires more than 24 bits of precision in order to be represented exactly must set the inexact flag. Of course, it's not enough that the inexact flag be set appropriately. The rounded values must also match our expectations for each of the four required rounding modes. Once the test gets to integer values which require 25 or more bits to be represented exactly for any rounding mode where we need to round the significand up to f plus 1, we will get a carry out from p adder 24 and we need to increase the exponent by 1 so we need to verify that we see this behavior in the test output. The next set of tests is primarily for testing the round ties to even rounding mode, but of course we also get output for the other three rounding modes. Each iteration through the loop tests three pairs of numbers. The pairs of numbers are the positive and negative versions of the same integer value. Using the values of x bar and y bar as they were defined in the previous video, the first pair tests when x bar is even and y bar indicates that we have a tie, so we round down to f. The second pair of numbers has an odd value for x bar, and y bar is 0, so again we round down to f. The third pair of numbers has an odd value for x bar, and y bar indicates that we have a tie, so we round up to f plus 1. For the round towards zero rounding mode, we always truncate all three pairs to their 24-bit value. For the round toward positive rounding mode, the positive values in the first and third pairs will always be rounded up, and the negative values truncated. For the round toward negative rounding mode, the negative values in the first and third pairs of significance will always be rounded up to f plus 1 which will make the binary 32 result more negative, that is, closer to negative infinity. And the positive values will always be truncated. The last set of tests verifies that for the round ties to even rounding mode, we always round the significant up when y bar is greater than 1 half, even when x bar is even. I think the tests cover all the major features.
If you think I missed something in my tests, please say so in the comments section. You can find the GitHub repo for this code in the description for this video. In the next video, I will expand on our knowledge of rounding. Please share this video with friends and colleagues who might have an interest in this video series. Questions and comments are welcome in the comments section. If you found this video useful, please click like below. While you're at it, subscribe to the channel, then click the bell to be notified when new videos are available. Thanks!